What's going on everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering and time for a little bit of a different kind of video. I hope you enjoy it. This is the definitive arcade one-up guide. Now there are a lot of things to love about arcade one-up cabinets, but there are a lot of things they do very poorly. And I'm going to discuss each and every one of them right after I give you a tour of everything and share a little bit of information about each cabinet. I'm going to talk about what's the best option for you. Is it just picking up a cheap cabinet and installing your own Raspberry Pi? What other options are there out there? Let's get into everything. Let's start with the tour. So this is just going to be a basic overview of everything going on in the arcade. I have every single arcade one-up cabinet, but it took a while. What you're seeing now is Bluetooth rope LED lighting that I run from my phone. It has like 50 or 100 different programs. I actually strung it a little bit behind each and every one of the cabinets as well. This is my brand new one, Burger Time. You'll see some of the cabinets have lit up marquees while others don't necessarily have lit up marquees. It just really depends on the generation. The early generation of these, which would be the things like Mortal Kombat, Final Fight, Street Fighter, Pac-Man, these are the oldies but goodies. They also have a wide variety of manufacturing problems. Every single cabinet in the first generation, I had to order not one, not two, but sometimes three or four cabinets before I would get enough spare parts that were not damaged in shipping to get a complete unit. There are some other issues with the older style screens and the controllers aren't as crisp, but overall the selections of games that you have is still pretty excellent. Final Fight's one of my favorite because it's got games like 1944 on it, which is a fan favorite. Some of the other cabinets like Pac-Man, this has just a few games. Also with Golden Tee, this you'll see is one of the early earliest models that they offered with a lit up marquee. Now you can actually modify any one of these cabinets with a lit marquee for about 30 bucks from a website called Arcade Mod Up. I'll show you uh, that I actually have that set up before and you'll see Galaga here. Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 2, as well as I think the third one. I'm not sure exactly which one's on there. Uh, you've got three Mortal Kombat games. Here you've got the newer Star Wars cabinet with the lit marquee. I'll say though, now Rampage, this is one that took me three different purchases to get them all replaced. Now I can report on all four of the latest generation purchases. Not only was the craftsmanship superior, but I didn't have a single problem with packaging. Here you have Turtles in Time. This is one of the newer ones. There's my dog Indy. Here's an older style. Not all the older ones had problems, but this particular cabinet, Asteroids, came through just fine. That's also the one that you'll want to use if you want your own Raspberry Pi setup. Here you have Marvel, which is a bunch of Marvel fighting games. Not my favorite, but it's still well made. Again, it came packed in rubber. This is the brand new. This one just came out. This is actually number 200 of 3,000 only. This one has Karate Champ and Bad Dudes on it. So you'll see... Uh, a wide variety but what i can report is the earlier cabinets are absolute trash and i've got to be honest with you arcade one up their biggest problem is their customer service you have to use some sort of email ticket support system that still takes days you're way better off getting inside of one of the arcade one up facebook groups or mod or reddit groups here's a view of all the top graphics you see on all of the uh cabinets You'll see, so there are varying degrees of detail here. The newer ones are obviously the better ones, but this Rampage one actually looks very cool. Uh, here's like an older style one as well. The Turtles, just like the original Turtles cabinet, so I really enjoy that. As same with Marvel as well. Centipede's a little more boring. You'll see, again, this is why this one gets used for uh, the Pi or, or MAME cabinets. Uh, and that's a different topic, which I'll discuss after we're done kind of checking everything out. Your, what you like, obviously is gonna be different. I want to have the home arcade. Now here we're gonna look at what used to be 
a centipede or whatever machine that I got custom graphics done by Arcade Monop to match Metal Slug. This is actually a Raspberry Pi machine. Now this is by far the most economical solution anyone can have. You buy the cheapest possible cabinet for maybe 200 bucks. I think that's what I paid for this one. And then you get, you don't even have to do the custom graphics, but then you get the setup from a company called Arcade Monop, which is like three or 400 bucks and you get a brand new joystick setup and you also get all the hardware you need. As you can see, I can play almost any game I want on the single cabinet. So if you just want to have one of these with all of the games, this is the best solution. You pick up an Asteroids or whatever one's the cheapest, then you go with Arcade Mod Up. By the way, not sponsored, but you go to Arcade Mod Up or whoever you like. If you want to do it all on your own, you're, you're so inclined, you can do that. Uh, but for this, uh, it's up to you. This took me five, six hundred dollars and I can play almost any game. Now here's a wild card actually that I'll show you. Um, the, the controller here is updated, but it's not ideal. Let me show you the Legends Ultimate Machine, which is about 400 bucks from Walmart. I actually have this rigged up with an Odroid machine and I can play anything up to basically PlayStation 2 games on this using the Odroid. This is probably the best home MAME system or do-it-yourself Raspberry Pi system that you can get. Uh, there's a little hardware, a little less plug-and-play easy because you've got to find the games and all sorts of stuff and if that's what you so choose. But that is actually a much bigger screen with a better controller. So you might have noticed that all those games are up about four inches off the ground. Those are actually custom built. They're just plywood and two by fours, a little less than two by four, three. I don't know what they are, but I can't remember, but just painted black to help raise them up off the ground because I'm six five. If you are an adult full and you're not, and you're like six three, six four, the risers are a must, first of all, in my opinion, which they should just be included. And most of the new ones do now include that. This is an early on thing where you had to buy a separate riser. That would have been a negative mark for sure. But nowadays, most of the new ones come with risers as they should. We've got new games like NBA Jam and Golden Axe coming out. This probably for Christmas, which I think are gonna be so perfect and I can't wait to add them to my collection. But so in terms of negatives, I still think even though they're three quarter size that they're too short, even with the riser. But I'm 6'5", so you know, if you're 6'2", they're probably fine. I have a little home built solution that all my games sit up on little risers, problem solved. In terms of Drawbacks, well, the earlier cabinets were riddled with shipping errors. I mean, lots of damage happened in shipping. And if you had to use their customer service, forget about it. I'm gonna be totally honest with you. The best way to do it is just buy multiples of them from Walmart and return the ones that were damaged. That's the only way that you could get these things fixed any reasonable amount of time. Now, Arcade One Up has gotten better. I will say, most importantly, they've listened to feedback in terms of the Burger Time cabinet, which is the most recent one they shipped me, had tons of like rubber blocks in it, and it was just premium packaging, and I didn't have a single scratch on it. I can also say the same thing for the Star Wars machine, which did have a manufacturing problem that I had to buy a second one to replace the controller, but the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles machine was flawless. The Marvel machine was flawless. Packaging done very good. They need to continue to improve their level of packaging. I will tell you also that they continue to add more value as, as they've moved out of the $300 price range and into the four to the $500 price range. I can tell you that the most recent NBA Jam machine comes with a themed NBA Jam stool, which I love. Getting the actual trademark stools is very expensive. If you want to have custom stools made with the licensing, they're like $70 and they're junk. I bought a couple of the like Pac-Man ones that I found on, on Amazon and the rings that you put together and this is not an arcade one-up product, but they were junk. So I'm hoping that what you get with the NBA Jam product is an improvement. Speaking of improvements, the NBA Jam machine also is Wi-Fi enabled so you can play over the internet. This is like, Super, super cool technology and still under the four, I think it's around 400 bucks. I don't think any one person needs obviously all of them. This is something that I choose to collect. This is my secret shame, my secret hobby that you see off camera. 
I enjoy it. We like to host people over. People come over. I think the best thing to do is get like the asteroids machine and get the arcade mod up thing and then get maybe a couple that you actually like for the aesthetics. Completely understanding that it's unrequired because you could play turtles on the Pi, Raspberry Pi machine or you could go like what I did with the Odroid which actually is a little more processing juice and you can get some better games. It's just a little more complex. With the Odroid I can actually use my PlayStation controller and play with that or I can bind the keys on the actual joystick board to whatever games I want to play. So in my basement, I have two different, um, basically, play whatever you want games, as well as one of everything Raspberry Pi has to offer. In terms of whether or not I think the games are good, look, let's be honest. You could always give us more games per cabinet. There are duds, in my opinion. Like, the Marvel game, unless you like Marvel fighting games... They're all basically the same. I mean, if you and, and same with Mortal Kombat. If you want to buy the Mortal Kombat game, it only has three of them. Should have had more than three. Now, I understand licensing is an issue, and that's probably the biggest cost they're dealing with. But, for example, Marvel, if you don't like Marvel fighting games, why would you buy that game? Not enough variety. Some of the early titles had a lot of variety on them, uh, where you had 1944 and Final Fight on the same cabinet. These are very different types of games. So I think Arcade 1UP could continue to improve the variety that they're offering on these multi-cab units. Like I saw what they're doing uh, with the Golden Axe. They're just going to have Golden Axe and Shinobi on the same cabinet, which I think is awesome. They're also doing these pinball things, which don't really appeal to me. If I was going to get pinball in my home arcade, I would get actual analog pinball. The only reason I don't have it is because I'm told that they're brutal to maintain and you're constantly fixing them. So maybe the digital will be a nice substitute, but for me, there's no substitute than the clings and clangs that you're going to get out of a hardcore pinball table. Now, the individual ratings I would give each cabinet would vary. There's none that are just totally awful. I will say that Pac-Man is not exactly... You know, it's one of those that you want, but it's still just Pac-Man, and it gets boring after a little while. Those standalone tables that I forgot to show you, the cocktail tables, those are actually limited edition two-player arcade mod-ups, and the quality of those is quite good. So you can play two-player uh, Pac-Man, or you can play uh, Street Fighter head-to-head -head a lot easier uh, across from each other sitting on a stool as opposed to uh, squeezing in next to each other. That's another big thing, you know. I worried, could two grown adults really fit standing next to each other on these machines? It's actually quite fine, especially on the four-player machines. You could fit three people in pretty easily, and during New Year's, I had four people playing Turtles. Uh, so, overall, I really like to see their trajectory that Arcade 1UP is doing with their product shipping and quality. They do need to continue to improve a manufacturing quality. I've never had, I would say Turtles was probably a nine. Um, Burger Time was probably a nine, but there were still little things on each cabinet that just needs that fit and finish that they need. And I've had cabinets that are sixes or fives with huge gaps that I needed to replace, missing screw holes, not enough parts. I've had this problem and it's plagued our kid one up. They need to continue to improve that. Their customer service is basically a two out of 10. If you ever need them, forget about it. You're better off going to Walmart and just returning it and buying a new one. I wish that wasn't the case. I wish I wasn't telling people, hey, you got to work around the system, but that's the reality of it. Best case scenario, you pick up something like Asteroids, which is like 200 bucks. You pick up one of their older ones, you hook up a Raspberry Pi, you buy a riser, you build a little secondary riser underneath it, you're, you're good to go. Or you could just build one riser that's high enough too. And you're good to go. And for less than 500 bucks, it's a must have for anybody that loves retro games or just wants a cool looking uh, arcade cabinet in their living room, game room, man cave, or whatever. These mod up companies like arcade mod up i've had excellent luck talking to them asking them questions getting parts they sell the separated li lighted marquees and everything like that so at any given cabinet they're going to range from a four out of ten to an eight out of ten i don't think they've achieved a 10 out of 10 yet because i i think nba jam or um Golden Axe are going to be their best bets, which means by then they're going to need better customer service and the fit and finish is going to have to continue the trajectory where it's at. It is improving, 
but it's not perfect. If they can improve that fit and finish, finish for this Christmas season, then they could be looking at nines. If they could get more reasonable customer support, even a live chat, you could see their first tens, I would say. Individually, it depends whether you like the game or not. I don't love Golden Tea, but I'll play it after I've had a few beers with my buddies. That game's never going to be a 10 to me, but I can tell you the game works exactly as advertised. It's fun. That has a light-up marquee. I mean, how could I not give it, to me, the best score right now is an 8 out of 10 because there were fit and finish problems with it, and customer service is always going to drag everything down. So if Arcade 1UP continues to improve quality, which they must do, and they pay attention to customer service, these will always be a recommend for me. Do you need them all? Of course not. Raspberry Pis are a thing. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.